which was the uh, my reaction to Shane Ritchie's return as Alfie Moon that's set to air on EastEnders. And this stream is basically going to be my pitch for Danny Dyer's exit storyline as Mick Carter. Um, I've given this a lot of thought because Mick Carter is my favourite character on EastEnders. So I am very gutted to see him go, but at the same time, I really, really want his exit storyline to be... Uh, sorry. I really want his exit storyline to be treated with a lot of respect and I want to keep it in line with his character. Um, I have written two endings to how I want his storyline to end or his, his time when he stands us to end. Um, I have written an ending which I feel like would be more likely and an ending I really hope we get. Um, unfortunately, the ending I feel like would be more likely is not the one I, I want for Mick but I'm thinking logically here and thinking, well based on what's been said in the run-up to his exit storyline and Danny Dyer's um, thoughts on it, I, I, I thought, well, if all right, we're probably going to probably going to end up going down this route. And, um, yeah, basically, I've, um, I've done it so that his exit storyline is um, basically uh his storyline begins in the run-up to christmas so from december 1st to christmas eve and then christmas day is the is the episode where he finally takes his exit and he leaves the show um i'm just gonna um i don't know uh recently used actors Online, I'll, I'll use Rick for now just because Rick's played by an English uh, uh, British actor and this is British, you know. I wish Kent Paul was in the game because he's actually voiced by Danny Dyer. Um, but yeah, um, so the storyline begins um, now. I'm going to st um, I've set up this, the exit storyline to begin. Um, through basically what we've had to deal what we've had already this year with uh mick and linda and janine so basically for those who have not caught on um mick and linda have officially separated um that and mick is now being seduced by janine she's with janine although i'm not entirely convinced that it's it's um real it might be. I, I don't really know. I just... I don't really have that... Um, I don't really have that... That, that feeling that... Um, Mick's relationship with Janine is real. I feel like he's just... In a way, using Janine. I don't... I don't get the thing. He's never said I love you to Janine. Um, I don't think he genuinely loves her. Um, but I do feel like their relationship will officially begin to crumble um, around the Christmas season and basically Mick will learn the truth about Janine uh, about Janine's about Janine's role in Linda's car accident and he will learn that Janine was actually the driver um, and this has already kind of been uh, teased because of the um, the photographs Frankie took with um, Janine in the, in the background getting rid of bloody clothes I think that will kind of spark the um the realization in linda's head and she will then tell mick the truth and then mick will see these pictures and he'll realize hang on a minute linda's telling the truth um so yeah um that's kind of the first uh first part of the story i've got everything written down here so i'll probably end up being paused for now and then i'll i'll read it out and then i'll play and talk uh mick also um teams up with Linda and Shirley to basically plot to expose Janine for what she's done. Um, obviously, as Mick is very good friends with Jack Branning and Callum Highway, um, he's already got access to the police there, but however, um, in classic Carter style, they want to they want to get that confession from Janine. You know, Linda uh, had this route with Stuart where she got Stuart to confess that... Um, you know he set Mick up and also the same with Dean where she finally um, got Dean to confess that he raped her um, and yeah so basically we see a lot of 
um, conniving. But in the meantime, there's, uh, along the Christmas period, I would believe towards the run-up to Christmas Eve, we get a scene of Mick sitting down providing, uh, or he's, he's establishing his will testimony. Um, uh, he's talking with a uh, solicitor, possibly, um, maybe even Richie Scott, if that's what she deals with. I doubt, I doubt it, though. Um, because he knows what Janine's capable of, obviously through what he's heard with Shirley, and obviously how she's set up, uh, she set Linda up to have crashed a car when it was her that did it instead. So Mick starts to prepare his will in case he dies um, in the showdown with Janine. Um, however, we don't actually see who he's put as the next owner of the bit. Uh, this is also going to be revealed um, towards the end of... Um, well, this is going to be t revealed towards the end of the storyline uh, after Mick takes his exit, who the owner of the Vic will be. However, in the meantime, similar to how on the Christmas Day 2020 episode we got to see um, the revelation that it was Phil and Sharon who orchestrated the attack on Ian Beale. Um, we're going to get something quite similar in the sense that Mick and Linda have both decided to um, give the Vic over to someone else because Linda will realise, hang on a minute, I shouldn't be working in this bar anymore. And Mick will like, yeah, I'm. I think it's. I think it's time to go because um, even though I have two separate endings, I'm going to kind of plant the seeds. I will personally plant the seeds on well, which way could it go? Um, and yeah, so, um, anyway, moving on to Janine's side of the storyline, it's going to be revealed that Jean, Janine has pre uh, preparations of her own as she has recently teamed up with Zack. Now, Zack, um, I'm kind of thinking they'll go down the more villainous route because even though it was him that cheated on Nancy... I feel like Zach in particular will be still quite bitter towards Mick, Linda, Shirley because um, he will probably see them as being responsible for the breakdown of his relationship with Nancy as well, based on the fact that you know Mick and Linda separated, Linda hit the bottle again. Um, you know, Mick had problems of his own that he couldn't he couldn't really attend to. Nancy and be there for as much as I personally hate the way I hate that because Mick and Nancy are really really close yet they've had no screen time together for months and they have not had a simple like heart to heart in ages and I'm I'm still quite annoyed about that to be honest but I digress um Zach ends up finding out that Mick is setting up preparations to take Janine down and he basically snitches um, I'd assume by then that he's, a, he's, a, he's gone official with Sam Mitchell as well, but he still holds a vendetta. Uh, probably that Gavin Sullivan um, ideology trickling into Zach, as of course Zach is Gavin's son. Um, so I want to kind of have that darkness in Zach present because it kind of. It's quite reflective and symbolic of well this is who Zach's father Zach's father was was a gangster so there's going to be that kind of not so much gene because you know evil isn't hereditary but that darkness and that bitterness um has going to kind of pass on kind of like how with Eric Mitchell Phil's father it passed down onto Phil and Ben as well it's, it's a bit of a recurring generational theme of, of bitterness I think just passes down from from um, generation to generation. I think every family on EastEnders has that, really. Um, not so much with bitterness, but with some um, some form of family characteristic, it, it passes down from each family member, each family generation. So, for example, with the Carters, uh, they all, they're all quite they're, they are quite stoic and quite um, I would say brave. So, for example, you look at Shirley. I feel like her. Um, her fighting spirit passed on onto Mick, and then that um, would, of course, pass on to you know Lee, Frankie, Nancy. Not so much with Johnny. I feel like Johnny took more of Linda's um, mannerisms and stuff. And Ollie is, you know, he's still growing up, so we don't really know with him at the moment. But yeah, anyway, back to um, 
so that's the whole Zach Hudson, um, as Zach and Janine aspect of the storyline. Um, now the ending of the episode is actually quite a quite a touching episode ending. I think for a Christmas Eve episode, it's quite a nice ending. Um, because it's the calm before the storm. Mick and Linda, they rekind they rekindle their love together for one last time, uh, but they both realise it is the last time they can they can do this like they, they they can't go back together after you know the damage is done the damage is being left irreparable she had the affair with max he was left traumatized over what katie did to him there's no going back but they think you know what because of the fact they've worked together so closely to bring janine down and because of everything they've lost because of their separation they spend one last night together and it's quite it's quite symbolic because of course when mick and linda first arrived on the square they were inseparable they really were like they, they didn't there they didn't split up once even with the whole mick and whitney thing like that they didn't separate they didn't and they they really were together and united no matter what so it's quite uh symbolic of the fact that their last night their last normal night together they are together as a couple um so the episode ends with Mick and Linda basically going in. Oh God! Uh, they, the episode ends with them going into the bedroom and leave that one there. And then we move on to Christmas Day. Christmas Day, um, a beautiful um, end point for Mick because he first appeared on Christmas Day. His first appearance was Christmas Day 2013. Now nine years, nearly ten years later. Uh, his last episode airs on Christmas Day 2022. So, um, this is where we get to the multiple endings, or well, the two endings. The episode um, starts off, I've got three paragraphs of, um, you know, clear, this is how I do it. The ending, however, is then cut off into two uh, two choices. So, the Christmas Day, the final showdown between Mick and Janine. This is where Mick and Janine finally con uh, confront each other. Sorry, I nearly uh, said a really horrible word there. Uh, now, I've kind of shaped this confrontation quite similarly to Mick's final showdown with Aidan Maguire from 2018, which I think has um, been... A, um, there's been a lot of drawing points between Mick Carter's um, character four years ago to when he was quite dark and quite brooding with the whole Stuart Highway storyline, the Aidan Maguire storyline. We saw Mick at his most dangerous point. Uh, you know, Mick was was brutal. He was, abs he was fighting like near enough every month. I loved it. Honestly, my favourite year on EastEnders before um, Mick's abuse storyline aired. Um, but, again, I digress. So, as Mick head downstairs to set up the, the Vic for Christmas Day, uh, and also, you know, get everything in order for when him and Linda go to the police station to report Janine, because they have all the evidence besides the confession, uh... Mick ends up catching the smell of uh, petrol and vodka on the Queen Vic floors. And as Janine has uncovered his plot to bring her down, she ends up threatening him into signing over the Queen Vic for her. This is where we kind of see Janine's final ulterior motive. Uh, quite an epic plot twist here. There's, there's going to be loads of plot twists in this episode, but oh, not going to be, you know what I mean. Um... Janine ends up threatening Mick into signing over the Vic before she burns it down. Um, obviously, Janine is a bit, you know, she's she's got that psychopath gene, you know, she's she's off her head. So she ends up threatening him. Um, so you know, if she can't have the Vic, no one can, and that kind of rubbish ideology. Um, and as he refu as Janine Mick refuses to sign over the Vic because obviously. Mick's not a pushover. He's not just going to roll over and let... You know, he's, Mick has never let that happen. Even when, you know, um, he got Linda to leave, he still went back to the Vic to take on Aidan Maguire. Like, he's never rolled over for anyone. You know, even the times he has, he's got back up and he's fought back. That's... And, you know, it's, it's classic Mick Carter... Um, 
yeah, it's, it's, it's classic Mick Carter coming in, which I think is brilliant. It's so good. Um, this, the, in my eyes, this exit storyline should really be um, reflective of Mick's growth as a character. Um, so choices he wouldn't have made 10 years ago are choices he's now making today because of the fact he needs to protect his family and that evolution that he's had over the last 10 years has really pushed him onto this this sort of um, mentality. So anyway, Mick is pushed to his... Um, um, Mick is end up uh, pushed to his limits and he, he actually goes for Janine. Uh, he, he basically, at first he doesn't beat her up um, or hit her. He basically runs over, grabs, and basically he has a little bit of a tussle with Janine. He overpowers her because of the you know Mick is a lot stronger. However, he's a, he ends up making quite a shocking move, um, and I know that he wouldn't normally do this. But what, uh, and I personally wouldn't do this myself. But Mick ends up punching Janine. I was thinking more of a push. But I think that rage of um, you know Mix that Mick has kind of ends up taking over because it's not just his life on the line here. Linda's as well. Linda's still upstairs, and you know she kind of catches on that smell, and she knows that something could go down. Um, Mick ends up punching Janine. However, uh, during the scuffle. Janine grabs the glass from the from a bar in the Vic and she stabs Mick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as Mick uncovers the wound and begins to stagger to the ground, Janine picks up the lighter and sets fire to the Vic. So yes, we have a huge assault. You know, Janine stabs Mick and she sets fire. So you can kind of see where this is going to go. So... Janine quickly exits the Vic and Mick is now bleeding heavily but proceeds to cover his wound by tearing his shirt and wrapping it around him. This, in my eyes, is, quite, is a nice little easter egg and foreshadowing to Lee Carter. Uh, foreshadowing because eventually he'll come back. Uh, but it's a nice little easter egg because, of course, Lee was a, um, he was a soldier. He was in the military. Uh, he was in the army. And uh, basically, Mick and Lee, they'll, they'll talk, they go drinking together, because uh, obviously it's referenced that um, Lee was Mick's drinking buddy, which is quite cool because there's only 14 years between Mick and Lee. So when um, Lee was, um, well, because obviously Mick was quite young when he had Lee, uh, Mick was also quite young when Lee turned 18. So therefore, they kind of caught up with each other. So that you know, it's, it's pretty cool in that regard. Um, so it's a nice little Easter egg to to Lee there, which you know I love getting Easter eggs in and references to uh, past characters and you know even foreshadowing potential comebacks. Um, and then I've also established that you know uh, Mick realizes that Linda's still upstairs, and therefore. He will stagger to save his wife from the fire, still bleeding heavily. But of course, now this is kind. Of, I'm kind of getting the imagery of Rick Grimes' his final episode from The Walking Dead, where he's still bleeding, but he ends up covering himself with um, just a torn piece of. Uh, I think it's, I think it's a um, a quilt or something. I can't remember what he used, but you know, mixed there, bleeding out with his shirt torn, and yeah, it's pretty, um, pretty intense. But. Um, Anyway, after struggling to escape the burning landmark, they both escape through the um, the door of the barrel store. Um, this is quite a it's quite a um, interesting move here because you could um, this is the first time the Vic would have caught fire since 2010 with uh, Peggy Mitchell's exit which is quite in itself a nice little reference because the Queen Vic fire uh, Queen Vic going on fire is quite um, symbolic of a character's uh, time at the Vic coming to a close uh, you know, did with Peggy, she was the, the leading landlady for what was it, 14 years and obviously Danny Dyer uh, or Mick Carter was the leading landlord for for ten years, 
uh, yeah, a few months with. I don't really, cl I don't really count the a few months that Sharon and Ian owned the Vic because they didn't even own it. But they owned it for less than six months. Like it was quite, quite sad, really. They, they, they literally less than six months they owned the Vic for. Um, Ian even less because he left um, in the January. But. Um, you know, Mick is struggling to breathe and he needs emergency medical treatment. Uh, at this point, Frankie and Shirley have teamed up to find Janine because obviously they kind of put the pieces to get together that Janine set fire to the Vic. And re but they realise that Mick's been stabbed as well as he's struggling to breathe, as well as Linda. So they both end up going to the hospital. And Janine is... Um, uh, Janine is... she's At this point, she's left and gone on a run. Um, at the, I would personally imagine that she comes back in the New Year plot and the storyline kind of picks up from there with Linda and uh, any returning characters that come uh, back afterwards, possibly even Lee. Uh, I'm mentioning them a lot because they are interwoven with my two ending choices. Um, anyway, so we I've also wrote written that we get a scene with, with Karen and Mitch not just because of the fact that Karen and Mitch are two of Mick's best mates, especially Mitch, but also if you remember four years ago when we got the groundbreaking knife crime storyline, um, Mick Carter saved Keegan, who was obviously Karen and Mitch's son, um, from, not only well, he saved them from, you know, the stab wound he say he saved Keegan's life so they begin to panic because obviously this is the guy that saved their son from that fate who could potentially die from that fate that Keegan could have died from so it's quite a it's quite a symbolic and significant moment because it it shows the it kind of shows the ripple effect of Mick Carter's actions throughout the square you know Mick is arguably one of the most likable characters on the square. He's the one uh, significant male character that's been in the show for a long time that Phil Mitchell hasn't smacked one. Uh, you know, you look at Ian, you look at Max, you look at Jack. You know, um, they're kind of the only few that are left now. Uh, Patrick, he's never hit Patrick, but at the same time, he's feuded with Patrick. You know, you could argue, argue that Phil is like the one guy on the square that Mick actually respects. Although probably not anymore because of the fact that um, Phil was partially responsible for Tina uh, taking... Well, Tina, he was responsible for Tina taking the fall for the attack on Ian and that kind of torn the friendship apart, which I was a bit gutted about because I quite liked Mick's friendship with Phil. But anyway, now we've officially covered the, the basis storyline for what leads into Mick Carter's exit. Now... I have two endings here, which are two possible exits for Mick. Exit 1 and Exit 2 um, are both very different. However, um, ending 1, I feel like, is more possible. And it's the, the ending I'm kind of dreading, but at the same time, I feel like it's, it's going to be the 1. Um, it's very short. Ending 2 is a lot longer, as obviously it's... Um, Ending two is a bit more of a stretch. But ending one is Mick Carter passes away. Uh, Mick Carter dies um, with the Julius theme playing in the background. Uh, Linda is alongside his deathbed, but we also get a cameo from Nancy, Lee, and Johnny. And they stick around until the funeral, which I think would air around January time, similar to Abby Branning's death, because she um, fell on the Christmas day. Uh, but her funeral wasn't until later because she didn't really die until later. But on this case, Mick dies on Christmas Day um, because of the fact that, um, you know, he, not only was he struggling to breathe through the fire, but also um, he got stabbed. So effectively, Janine, uh, this is the thing though, if Janine's responsible for his death, that would also lead to an exit for Janine but I've not really thought that far into it I will admit I wish I had but at the same time I feel like Janine's just got that plot armor 
um, and not as annoying as that is and as stupid as that is, I feel like that would just be the route EastEnders would go down. Um, but yeah, Mick Carter dies uh, with the Julius team playing in the background uh, and their children return for the funeral and they plot their revenge against Janine Butcher. I want to keep Lee around. Uh, and obviously, it's up to Danny Boy Hatchell whether he returns for a lot longer, but I want to keep Lee around because I want to see... Um, I want to see Lee's reaction to uh, to Frankie, based on the fact that he knows uh, uh, who Frankie is, and of the fact that how Frankie was conceived was through sexual abuse. Um, I want to see Lee respond to Zach Hudson's betrayal of Nancy, and possibly get a, a scene paralleling um, uh, Lee beating up Ben, from when, of course, Lee beat uh, Lee beat up Ben back in 2014 because of he said some horrible stuff to um johnny uh some disgusting homophobic remarks and lee beat the crap out of him uh i feel like we're gonna get a scene between lee and zach uh we would get a scene between lee and zach. I, I say we're gonna i know we're not going to because this isn't canon this isn't this is my personal head uh my personal pitch on how i'd write mick's exit but yeah so ending one is or exit one is mick dies um again i feel like this is more possible based on some of the comments danny dyer has made um himself but this is this is ending two now ending two is the ending i'm hoping for so mick carter survives and is met with lee nancy and johnny who have returned after hearing the news of mick's hospitalization now Granted, there's a there's a possibility we get a bit of a time jump on the Christmas Day episode, so we have a bit of a time jump to either Boxing Day or the 27th of sep- uh, December, uh, but the episode still airs on Christmas Day in real time, so it is still a Christmas Day exit. Um, so the the kids return. Oh, I say the kids, they're, they're all they're all like gone 30 now, Jesus, but they all return, um, and Mick he comes around. And he makes this huge decision. Uh, this decision's quite reflective of Mick's time on EastEnders, especially towards the last few years of his time on the show. Uh, Mick accepts that it's time he finds peace with himself again through the help of his children and decides to leave Walford for good. Uh, now, if we go back to Mick Carter's time on EastEnders, as the Queen Vic landlord, he has had some serious serious trauma you know uncovering that he was abused by katie lewis uh discovering that his sister was actually his mum uh, and then his sister who was actually his aunt but he still considers his sister dies um his brother who he found out was his brother assaulted his wife in the worst possible way uh his best mate set him up for a crime and didn't even do and he ended up in prison for it he suffered with anxiety. He's Mick has had so much. He's gone through so much during his time on the square. So his exit is simply uh, so that Mick can find peace with himself again. And I'm quite down for that ideal exit storyline. Um, you know, I, I've listed that he wants to go seek help um, for the years of trauma he's faced. You know, through the likes of Katie Lewis as a child. Uh, Dean Wicks, Aidan Maguire. I would have, I was going to put down Stuart, but at the same time, I feel like he kind of made peace with that. Um, him and Stuart have kind of gotten. Obviously, Stuart punched him back in January, but that's you know, he never fought back because he kind of knew Stuart was going through something at the time. Uh, but yeah, anyway, um, he uh, Mick ends up deciding that it's time he puts himself first uh he leaves with his children with so with lee nancy and johnny um although i think lee would probably stick around for a little bit longer i feel like he would come back or it would either be him and nancy leaving i don't think johnny would go just yet i feel feel like johnny would stick around for a little bit longer too because obviously we haven't really had that um that connection between linda and johnny for a long time because of the uh, johnny was Let's face it, Johnny was pretty much Linda's favourite, most protective. I feel like we need to see Johnny's reaction to Linda's alcoholism and the affair and get get some storyline, get some scenes between them two. Uh, but yeah, 
Anyway, so uh, as Mick survives and decides it's time to leave, he has one final scene with Linda, and they make the announcement that in Mick's will, obviously Mick's not dead, but, you know, uh, for both endings, uh, Linda announces that Frankie has been signed over the Queen Vic, which is actually brilliant, because it will make uh, Frankie the first... Um, landlady of the Vic to lead with a disability because of course Rose ailing Ellis' death and Frankie's death um, so it'd be the first she'd be, she would be the first disabled uh, Queen Vic landlady which I would love I think it would be absolutely brilliant I feel like Frankie would do such a good job as um, the owner of the Vic um, and anyway um Mick Carter leaves the square alongside Ollie, Lee, Nancy and Johnny with the Julius theme playing. I'm going to edit that a little bit because I don't think Johnny and Lee would leave, but I think Nancy and Ollie would. Um, I include Ollie because of the fact that Linda would likely come to the realisation that, you know, Mick has been so good with Ollie, she would think that he would be better off with Mick. You know, Mick's kind of single-handedly brought up Ollie for the last you know year of his life. Um, I think Mick, as Mick would pers- would pursue, you know, a new start, um, he'd go and raise Ollie alone with Nancy, uh, which I think would be really nice because Nancy then would get more of a redemption. Um, and more closure as well because I feel like Nancy's exit was really abrupt so therefore bringing her back for Christmas you know it kind of finalises it and you know Mick and Nancy get to restore their relationship and most importantly it leaves the door open for Mick's return now I know that Danny Dyer stated he wants to put a full stop on the job Putting a full stop on the job doesn't mean killing them off. It doesn't. You can, by putting a full stop on something, you'll bring a, a natural close. We look at some famous story stories out there um, that have not ended with character deaths. Uh, famous arcs. I think the main arc Mick has gone through in this character, in this his time on EastEnders, is establishing himself as as a per- uh, you know it's identifying his purpose like Mick has said on so many occasions um that Mick only ever feels like he's being himself when he's with his kids and of course Linda but his relationship with Linda felt felt you know it fell apart so for Mick to leave alongside one of his kids and stay with one of his kids and be a father and focus on recovering his own mental health I think will be more in line with his character than killing him off so it's it's a bit um, you know I would personally go down this route being truthful I wouldn't kill him off um, you know I think it would be cool if Mick left Danny Dyer went and did some other stuff and then thought, you know what? I think it's time I want to revisit Mick again in, in a few years. Um, I think it'll be fantastic. It'll be absolutely brilliant. Um, Mick, in my eyes, has solidified himself as as a an EastEnders icon. You know, every single decade of EastEnders, we've had some brilliant and significant character centre. Uh, you know, with, when it began, we had Ian and Sharon in the nineties. When you're know, five years on, we get Phil and Grant. In the 2000s, we get Cat and Alfie. I feel like for the 2010s, it was Mick and Linda Carter. Um, I think that Mick will be one of those characters that it just becomes an East Enders icon. So yeah, on that front, um, that's my that's my pitch for Mick Carter's exit storyline. That he feuds with Janine. He has an epic final showdown with Janine and then he either dies or he leaves with his children. I want to know what you guys think. 
about this. Would you kill off Danny Dyer? Would you kill off Mick Carter? Would you let him leave peacefully? Would you give him a happy ending or a sad ending? Um, would you bring anyone back in the run-up to his exit storyline? Would you... You know, what would, what would you guys do? I would love to know because I think this is quite a... This is quite a big talking point of um, of EastEnders this year because of the fact that a major star is departing. Um, I, I do wish that other stars have had this kind of uh, build up to their exit storyline. I feel like Max, uh, Jake Woods, Max Branning should have had one. Um, I don't think we've had a significant build up to a departure for a long time. In fact, I think the last one was probably uh, Peggy probably Peggy Mitchell I think like her exit storyline was so well written and so well thought of um, you know it had so much build up to her death and you know I think it was such a well written story and of course the ripple effect afterwards um, the Vic will never be the same again um, you know I think the square will never be the same again I think it would be absolutely brilliant to um to to write to to write this um the storyline in this way i'm kind of setting myself up for disappointment here because i don't think they're going to go down this route i'm just hoping that they do not give mick carter a lackluster exit danny said that it's going to be huge it's going to get people talking i'm hoping that they have a big stunt a big moment but they don't kill him I don't want him. I don't want him to die. I feel like it'd be too predictable. Um, you, like, like I said, you can put a full stop on something and not have it end in tragedy. You know, Mick, um, his character came to a close. I, I kind of, I look at, you know, there's been many exits on TV that have kind of put a, that have pulled, put a full stop, but also left in um you know w without killing him off look at rick grimes from the walking dead um he was set up to die he was dying but he got saved and lo and behold they're continuing his story through films i'm not saying we're going to get a mick carter standalone movie i think danny dyer would happily do films again but not as mick because kind of defeats the object really um you know i feel like you can kind of you can re give mick some rest for a while um especially with everything he's been through give him give him some rest don't completely put him to put him down <laughs> you know that's what i would do and also if eastenders ever wanted to bring back a load of um characters for like a week of return thing i would do it personally i I'd have it so that on one day famous return is like Grant Mitchell the next day famous return is Chrissy Watts the next day famous returns Mick Carter and so on and so forth um, that's how I will personally do it for um, for an anniversary week or um, you could do uh, for the 40th anniversary doing EastEnders backstory week so that every day you get a, a solid episode based on the backstory of some characters. I think the Carters, oh my god, the Carters have got a backstory, have got such an, a detailed history. They could get their own spin off prequel series. It'd be absolutely awesome. But yeah, that is my personal uh, pitch and um, my synopsis for how I would write out my favourite character on EastEnders. Um, I want to, like I said, I want to, I want to know what you guys would do. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time and peace out guys. Bye bye.